morning. Bom dia. Buenos dias. Y bienvenida a la adoración. Aquí celebramos todos personas as nidos de Dios. Hablamos en idiomas que inglés y español y idiomas de todo el mundo. Porque nos Dios es un Dios de todas personas en el mundo. Did anyone understand everything I was just saying perfectly clear? No. A little bit. A little bit. Okay. So let me translate. Good morning and welcome to worship. We speak in Englishes like English and Spanish and well, all the languages of the world because our God is a God of all people in the world. Today and every day, we celebrate that God speaks to each and every person gathered and scattered from this place we call church. We rejoice that God calls people young and old and everywhere in between to participate in our Creator's ongoing work. Today, we celebrate this ongoing work of the Spirit as we celebrate Pentecost Sunday. On this day, the day when the disciples went out and welcomed more and more people by speaking a variety of languages, we also welcome some new members into the flock. People who have heard God's call and responded. Do you hear God's call in this space? Perhaps it's a call to share peace, a sign of God at work amongst us right here and now. Friends, I feel that call. My name is Reverend Jessica Hanley, the pastor here at Quentin UCC, and I want to take this time to share the peace of Christ with each and every one of you. We share the peace of Christ in many ways, air hugs, air high fives, if you're close with someone nearby and you want to give them a real hug, go for it. Share the peace of Christ however you feel called, feeling God's presence in this space. May the peace of Christ be with you. now that we have shared the peace of Christ, we join our voices in our opening hymn number 272 on Pentecost they gathered. You can rise as you feel called and able. Pentecost is just getting started. God is at work in and through the people gathered and scattered in this place we call church. And there's a lot that God is doing through this church. 
At this time, we share what's going on in and around our community with our time of announcements. Today, we're having a big celebration with the baptisms of Kane Calcifer, who is over here, the son of Harrison and Catherine Snyder, and Elijah Amparo, the daughter of Paige and Samuel Martinez, who will be making her appearance shortly. She is coming down right now, the grand entrance of Elijah, everyone. And we'll also be welcoming to our community Kane's mom, Katherine Snyder, as a new member today. So we have a lot to celebrate today. There will also be a reception after worship today to send our well wishes uh, as I begin my new venture in the next couple of weeks. Um, and speaking of new ventures, uh, while Raheem and I were away on vacation, we got engaged. So there are many new things happening. I just wanted to share that good news. You're stuck with me, Raheem, they know now. Um, on Wednesday, June 8th, the office will be closed as we are celebrating the Strawberry Festival, which will be happening from 4 till 7. What time's the Strawberry Festival? Awesome job. And it will be held at the Quentin Carnival Grounds. Please consider adding your name to one of the sign-up sheets that Kathy and Kay will be holding after worship. Kathy and Kay, can you wave your hand so we know who you are? Over there by the dog. So Kathy and Kay will have, and Kathy's back there in the back. She would like to come up and make an announcement quickly. festival is rain or shine they'll be taking names after worship to help with the festival um, cleaning berries starts at 10 a.m on tuesday so come ready to clean berries on tuesday if you are free i hear it's going to be a great fantastic time and support our local fire department they will be holding a chicken barbecue on saturday june 11 11 a.m until the chicken is gone it's eight dollars for half a chicken potato and roll. Look for them at the Tack Shop parking lot. Bethany Children's Home Summer Concert Series begins Friday, June 17th with Jeff Crick Jr. and Elvis Tribute at 7 p.m. It's only $5 a car. Proceeds benefit the Bethany's mission. Additional details can be found at bethanyhome.org. And we have our 50 plus one fun fact for today. The Sunday school would include a sing-along the first Sunday of the month, and a punch on the porch would occur on the last Sunday of the month. And friends, we have shared our announcements, but it looks like we might have one more from Kathleen in the back. So 10 a.m. on Tuesday, show up to the carnival grounds if you want to clean bear. Wednesday, my bad. Wednesday morning, if you want to clean berries, be at the carnival grounds. The church will be filled with the spirit, but not filled with the people cleaning the berries. Now that we have finished our time of announcements, let us begin our worship service once more with our call to worship. Divine teacher, we're all around us with your wisdom. Divine Circle us with the peace that comes only in your view. As the holy winds fill our lives with dreams, empower us to live God's hope in this world. As the holy fire fills our hearts with visions, empower us to create a world of justice and peace. May the divine gales of this day move us to know the love of God. Holy winds of mystery, as the dawn breaks forth, your spirit exhales your intentions for our world. As new chapters and eras arise in our lives, your spirit invites us to wisdom, 
that only comes from you. Open our souls to the wonders of your being. Settle our hearts when questions surround us. Fill our minds with the knowledge that your spirit will lead us forward. Amen. Friends, will you join me in a time of reflective prayer? Loving God, divine comforter, peace is absent from our hearts. From pain to grief and from turmoil to frustrations, we yearn for what we lack. We ache for the pains and injustices of this world to cease. What we forget is to pause and voice our concerns to you. How can we better integrate your presence in our lives? When have we forgotten to include our joys and heartaches? Move us to seek you and speak the burdens of your hearts to you. May your spirit refill our souls with peace and let all of your people say, Amen. <coughs> The Spirit of God delivers grace and peace as we move through our journeys and inspires us to connect with God and neighbors to create a world of hope and joy. Let all of God's people rejoice. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes to us from the book of Acts, chapter 2. Verses 1 to 21. Feel the Spirit moving in this space today as this ancient story is read. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every people under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one of them heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our native language, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Rygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya, Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Fellow Jews and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. The overhead announcement sounds. Please do not leave your bags unattended. Any unattended luggage should be reported immediately. Thank you.
The airport is packed full of tired looking folks. Some people just arriving, others next getting ready for their next leg of their journey. But all of us listening to that same announcement, an announcement which is repeated over and over and over again in multiple languages, multiple different times, multiple voices. And as I look around that airport, I see Pentecost. People from all over the world gathered in one place, God working in and through each of them in a special way. From the woman who helps an overwhelmed mother with her children in the terminal, to the stranger who offers a piece of gum during takeoff so their flight mate's ears won't pop as we ascend. This, this is Pentecost in the modern world. For that seatmate might not speak the same language, but a simple gesture of a pack of gum to receive. That is communion. Sacred, holy gum. No words needing to be spoken. A simple gesture. The woman helping the tired mother in the terminal, remembering her own days of traveling with little ones and how she longed for others to help her. She chooses to step up herself, speaking a language of love, which she was not shown herself so many years ago. Pentecost happens each and every day in the sacred encounters we experience, where we give the spirit the room to work, where we see a sibling in Christ in need and choose to act rather than remaining still when we choose to speak up rather than remaining silent, when we choose to challenge the narratives of society telling us who is worthy and who is unworthy, and remembering that we are all beloved children of God, hearing a call from God speaking to us. A call which might not be as clear as an announcement coming from a loudspeaker in an airport but is clear in the daily interactions we share, little Pentecosts each and every day. Let us give thanks to God each and every time we share in one of these sacred moments, remembering it is at that same spirit that was working so long ago that is still working in and through us today, and that all of God's people give thanks and say, Amen. I'd now like to invite our friends who are joining us for baptism to come on up to the front. And I'm not going to have you step up here because there's a lot of wires, but we'll come down to you down in this area. Sisters and brothers in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, God's Spirit initiates us into Christ's holy church, puts us on the stage of God's saving drama, and gives us new birth through water and the Spirit. So come to the water, water poured over and immersing us, water flowing freely for all who will receive it, water from the streams of God's saving power and justice. Water that brings hope to all who thirst for righteousness. Water that refreshes life, nurtures growth, and offers new birth. Here we come to the waters to baptize Cain, 
and Elijah. And in each presence to renew our commitments in Christ, who has raised us, the Spirit who has birthed us, and the Creator who is making all things new. Jesus came to John to be baptized by him, but John tried to make him change his mind. I ought to be baptized by you, John said, yet you have come to me. Jesus said, Let it be so for now. For in this way, we shall do all that God requires. So John agreed. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he came up out of the water. Then heaven was opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God coming down like a dove and light lightning on him. Then a voice said from heaven, This is my own dear Son, with whom I am well pleased. At another time, Jesus said, Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The sacrament of baptism is an outward and visible sign of the grace of God, inasmuch as the promise of the gospel is not only to us but also to our children. Baptism with water and the Holy Spirit is the mark of their acceptance into the care of Christ's church. I know, Elijah, it is very exciting. <laughs> it is exciting to be part of this church. The sign and seal of their participation in God's forgiveness and the beginning of their growth into full Christian faith and discipleship. This is the water of baptism. Out of this water we rise with new life, forgiven of sin and one in Christ, members of Christ's body. Catherine and Harrison, do you desire to have Cain, Councilor Snyder, baptized in the faith and family of Jesus Christ? If so, say we do. And Paige and Samuel, I'm going to back up a second. Do you desire to have Elijah and Paro Martinez baptized into the faith and family of Jesus Christ? If so, say we do. Will you encourage Cain and Elijah to renounce the powers of evil and to renounce the freedom of new life in Jesus Christ? If so, answer, we will, with the help of God. Will you teach Cain and Elijah that they may be led to profess Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior? If so, say, we will, with the help of God. Do you promise, by the grace of God, to be Christ's disciples, to follow in the way of our Savior, to resist oppression and evil, to show love and justice, and to witness to the work and word of Jesus Christ as best as you are able? If so, please answer, we do, with the help of God. Do you promise, according to the grace given you, to grow with Cain and Elijah in the Christian faith, to help them be faithful members of the Church of Jesus Christ, by celebrating Christ's presence, by furthering Christ's mission in all the world, and by offering the nurture of the Christian Church so that they may affirm their baptisms. If so, please answer, we do, with the help of God. And now, congregation, it is your turn. Jesus Christ calls us to make disciples of all nations and to offer them the gift of grace and baptism. Do you, those who are here at Quentin UCC, who witness and celebrate this sacrament, promise your love, support, and care to the ones who are about to be baptized as they live and grow in Jesus Christ. We promise our love, support, and care. Friends, let us pray. Christ be with you. Almighty God, the life you birthed in us by baptism into Jesus Christ will never die. Your justice never fails. Your mercy is everlasting. Your healing river flows. Your spirit blows where you will. We cannot stop you, God. But sometimes we try. We try to block the flow. We redirect the winds of the spirit or you walk so far away from the life-giving stream that we do not hear its sound, and we forget its power. We parch ourselves. We are dry and thirsty, O oh God. Come refresh us. Come upon us, Holy Spirit.
Come upon us, Holy Spirit. Come upon these waters. Come upon these waters. Let these waters be to us drops of your mercy. Let these waters remind us of your righteousness and justice. Let these waters renew in us the resurrection power of Jesus. Let these waters make us long for your coming reign. Most holy God, Abba, Father, glory to you. Jesus Christ, Savior, Lord, glory to you. Spirit of fire, spirit over the waters, spirit of holiness, glory to you. Eternal God, one in three and three in one, all glory is yours, now and forever. Amen. Calcifer Snyder. Oh, he's napping. Okay, Calcifer Snyder. You are baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Elijah. Elijah Amparo Martinez. You are baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Do you want to sprinkle some water on her? Go ahead. We'll just sprinkle a little water. Good job. Friends, let your people, God, let your people rejoice in the newest members of Christ's eternal faith and say... Amen. You can walk the babies around the congregation so everyone can celebrate. Thank you for helping me. Let us pray for the ones baptized today. Gracious God, you have filled the world with joy by giving us the gift of Jesus. Bless Elijah and Cain, the newest baptized members of the family of Christ. May they be filled with joy. May they never be ashamed to confess a personal faith in you. Bless the parents of Cain and Elijah. May they always show their gratitude for life you have given by loving and caring for Cain and Elijah. Bless these, your faithful people. Unite them in the peace of Christ and the company of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we have some little welcoming gifts from our knitters in the congregation, so I'd like to invite Brenda over now to give them their welcoming blankets. This shawl has been passed through many praying hands and has been blessed by many loving hearts just for you. <laughs> May God's grace 
this shawl warming comforting enfolding and embracing may this mantle be a safe haven a sacred place a security and well-being sustaining and embracing to good times and the difficult ones May the one that receives this shawl be cradled in hope, kept in joy, graced with peace, and wrapped in love. So we have one for Cain and one for Elijah, and we also have one for Catherine, who will be joining us as a new member today. Friends of Christ, we are received into the church through the sacrament of baptism. We have just rejoiced in Cain and Elijah's baptisms, but the celebration is not over yet. Catherine has found nurture and support in the midst of the family of Christ. Through prayer and study, she has been led by the Holy Spirit to affirm her baptism and to claim in our presence her covenantal relationship with Christ and the members of the church. She is here for service to Jesus Christ, using the gifts which the Holy Spirit bestows. Hear the words of Jesus Christ. I am the vine, and you are the branches. Anyone who abides in me and I in that person is the one who bears much fruit. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you will, and it shall be done for you. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. Catherine Snyder, do you desire to affirm your baptism into the faith and family of Jesus Christ? If answer, I do. Do you renounce the powers of evil and desire the freedom of new life in Christ? If so, please say, I do. Do you profess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? Do you promise by the grace of God to be Christ's disciple, to follow in the way of the Savior, to resist oppression and evil, to show love and justice, and to witness to the work and word of Jesus Christ as best as you are able? If so, please say, I promise with the help of God. Do you promise, according to the grace given you, to grow in the Christian faith and to be a faithful member of the Church of Jesus Christ. Celebrating Christ's presence and furthering Christ's mission in all of the world. If so, please say, I promise with the help of God. Let us unite with the Church in all times and places in confessing our faith in the triune God. Do you believe in God? I believe, I believe in, in God. God. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I, I believe, believe in Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe, I believe in the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Let us rejoice and celebrate in the Spirit with us as we're reminded of God's presence in the baptismal waters, waters which rain down on us now.
let us, the members of Quentin United Church of Christ, express our welcome and affirm our mutual ministry in Christ. We welcome you with joy in the common life of the Church. We promise you our friendship and our prayers as we share the hopes and labors of the Church of Jesus Christ. By the power of the Holy Spirit, may we continue to grow together in God's knowledge and love and be witnesses of our risen Savior. In the name of Jesus and on behalf of Quentin United Church of Christ, we extend to you the hand of Christian love, welcoming you into the company of this local church. Welcome, Catherine, and the rest of your family to Quentin United Church of Christ. We are so happy you are part of our family. Friends, we have welcomed new life into the church. We have reaffirmed the bonds we have together, and that is something to celebrate. But what is a celebration without a feast? But this feast only contains bread and juice, a table of extravagant welcome, a table that does not require reservations, a table that is not mine or yours or the church's, but is Christ's table a table where all are welcome. No matter who you are or where you are, you are welcome at this table. The only requirement to come to this table is that you be a little bit hungry. We celebrate the divine spirit who hovered over creation and brought order out of formlessness. We praise you, spirit, we celebrate the divine spirit who filled Jesus Christ with power and wisdom and through him made divine life available to all. We praise you, spirit. We celebrate the spirit who has been poured out on all people and leads us into the reign of God. We praise you, spirit. And so as we gather at this table, we recognize the spirit's presence amongst us and we open our hearts to the Spirit's influence. God, we come knowing that we depend on you for life and truth and love. We come knowing that you welcome us with open and accepting arms. We come ready to meet you and be changed by the encounter. The Lord Jesus, on the eve of his crucifixion, gathered his friends for a meal. During supper, he took a loaf of bread and gave thanks for it. He broke it and passed it among those who were gathered with these words, This is my body, which is broken for you. Take, eat, and remember. After the meal, Jesus took a cup of wine and gave thanks for it. Then he passed it among them with these words, This is my blood which is shed for you. Take, drink, and remember me. So at this time, I invite our ushers to come forward to share the elements. We're going to have three stations today. We'll have a station, I think, over here, a station over here, and one in the back. All of our servers will be wearing gloves and masks as they share the elements with you. As we take the elements, I invite you to go back to your seat with them as you are able, and we'll all partake together at once.
please make your way to one of these communion stations, which is nearest to you. I feel like I'm doing a flight attendant thing. If you are closest to this side, please make your way that way. There is more than enough for everyone. And there are no restrictions to receiving communion. You just need to be a little bit hungry.
Friends, let us give thanks for the gifts we received and the sharing of this meal. Thank you, Divine Spirit, for this meal of remembrance and for coming to us as we have shared it. May the love we find at this table be reflected in our lives. May the power we receive at this table make us peacemakers and healers. And may the Spirit who fills us again at this table lead us to those who proclaim God's reign in every word we speak and in everything we do. And let all of God's people say, Amen. So often, we fill our space with words as we pray. We speak them aloud, letting the reverberations swell in the walls, echoing in our ears. Today, though, I invite us to listen to what the Spirit is calling each of us to pray for. For the next minute, we will pray silently, then join together in one voice after a bell has chimed in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Because of our love for the Divine Giver, we seek ways to share our love through our treasures, talents, and time. Whether we give in this hour or throughout the week, may we remember that God's Spirit encircles these gifts with hope. Let us give thanks for the gifts we have shared in this space and the gifts we have shared in the many spaces we gather from today. Holy winds of excitement, may the gifts we share today and throughout this week nudge us to dream your dreams. May our giving inspire us to embrace your visions for our world. Holy Spirit, enliven our souls to create your realm of justice and peace on earth. And let all of your people say, Amen. And let all of God's people rise as they feel called and able for our closing hymn, Number 261, Let Every Christian Pray, which Jim will be leading us from up here, but I want to hear everybody's voices. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
in each gust of wind, may we reach out to the God of inspiration. In each flicker of the flame, may we follow the light of Christ. For the Spirit of God surrounds us, filling our hearts with dreams, our minds with visions, and our souls with the energy to create the realm of God on earth. So let us go forth creating that realm of God, embracing God's still speaking voice. Go in the peace and love of Jesus Christ, and don't forget to stay for cupcakes. Amen. If you are staying for the reception, the celebration, we will be inside in the gathering place. So follow the crowds. We'll be surrounded the cupcakes, I'm sure. So follow the crowds up the hill, inside. <laughs>